Okay, so in this next unit, we're going to talk a lot about how to use a thing called a Carnot map, which is a really handy way um, to optimize our Boolean expressions without doing lots of tedious uh, and sort of time-consuming Boolean algebra. But before we dig into K-maps, there are two preliminary concepts that we need to go over. We've talked about them in the past, but they're really important for understanding K-maps, so it's worth sort of recapping uh, just a little bit. So these two concepts are, first, the uniting theorem, which we've talked about a bunch uh, while doing simplification via Boolean algebra. And two is gray codes, which we talked about a while back, um, but these are really important for organizing the structure of our K-maps, so we're going to revisit those again. So first let's talk about the uniting theorem. Like I said, we've been doing a lot of it already um, with our simplification via Boolean algebra, but Let's go ahead and put it in the proper context and talk about kind of the mechanics. Okay, so the uniting theorem has two forms, a sum of products form and a product of sums form. So first that sum of products form, x, y, x and y, or x and y naught is equal to x and x or y and x or y naught is equal to x. Now, as we talked about it with our simplification theorem studies, um, what we do is kind of look for the term that gets inverted, in this case, the y, right? And we know that that's the combining term, and we keep everything else, so in this case, the x. So let's look at a really simple, a little bit more complex example, something like this, a uh, and b naught and c, or a and b and c, and we know that we can combine these terms across the b variable, and then they'll combine to get us a and c. All right, so this whole expression simplifies to just a and c. But let's take a closer look at the mechanics of how that happens, right? So if we write these terms vertically, a, b, not c, a, b, c, and to make it a little bit easier, we can actually convert it to a binary notation, right, by writing the min terms themselves. So 1, 0, 1, and 1, 1, 1, right? Here we can see that between these two terms, there is only one bit of difference between them. And that's the governing mechanic behind the uniting theorem, right? If these two terms have only one bit in difference, then they can be combined, right? They can be simplified to be just whatever's left over with a little gap in the middle. So we say right, one space one, right? So that would be our A and C. So let's look at a slightly bigger example. Something like this, A naught, B and C, or A naught, B and C naught, or A, B, C or A, B, C naught. All right. Now when we go to combine these guys, it looks like this. We go to these first two terms and see that they can combine using C. And that would get us A naught and B. And we can also see that the second, excuse me, the third and fourth terms can combine using the C's as well, and that would give us A and B. Now, so that whole expression simplifies to A naught B or A B, and we see an opportunity to use the uniting theorem again, right, this time across the A. And from there, we'll see that the expression simplifies to A. So there we go. From there, we can see that the uniting theorem can be applied more than once, right? We can group two terms, two terms, those terms that result can themselves be combined again to simplify even further. So we can have this kind of chain reaction of the uniting theorem that happens all the way down until we get um, some final results. And as we'll see, this sort of chain reaction is the basis of how we simplify using K-maps. So that's our recap of the uniting theorem. 
Next thing we want to talk about is gray codes. Now, two important things about gray codes. The first thing is to remember that it's a binary sequence. And that all adjacent terms can only be different by one bit. So, and we have a bit of an algorithm to convert um, regular binary into gray code binary, and that was for bit in if in minus one, which is the bit to its left, is equal to one, then n equals one minus n. Else it stays the same, else n equals n. So let's look at how this works for a two bit and then we'll do a three bit sequence, but let's start with two bits. So let's do the normal sequence. Remember in two bits, we can count zero to three. So zero, one, two, three. In regular binary, that gets us zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. But if we convert them to our gray code equivalents, zero, zero stays the same. I'm gonna kind of brush through these gray code conversions, but obviously go check out the lessons on gray codes to see this process done in a little bit more detail. Um, one, zero, one becomes the same thing, zero, one. One, zero is where it gets different. This zero, because it's n minus one is one, inverts, and that gets us one, one. And one, one, this one has a one in its n minus one spot, so it inverts again, and that gets us one, zero. So the gray code counting up sequence for two bits looks like this, zero, one, three, and two. So, and again, the important thing here is that it's the numbers, the terms, organized in such a way that every adjacent term has only one bit in difference. And if you're paying attention, you can probably guess that this relates to the uniting theorem because remember the uniting theorem combines terms that have one bit in difference. So gray code lets us stack the terms um, in a neat organized way um, so that all the adjacent terms are uh, one bit difference and can be combined using the uniting theorem. And before we wrap this up, let's take a look at the um, three-bit example. We won't do a four-bit example. It'll be fun, but uh, it's, it would take just a little bit too much time. So three bits counts zero to seven. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. In regular binary, that's zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, one zero zero, one zero one, one one zero, one one one, and then we convert them to their gray code equivalent. That's going to be um, zero zero zero, zero zero one, zero one one. Right, these first four are going to stay exactly the same as they were in two bits. Zero one zero, one one zero. Um, one, 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 zero, one, and one, zero, zero. So there we go. What is that in regular base 10? That's going to be zero, one, three, two, six, seven, five, and four, right? So that sequence seems to make no sense. But remember, for gray codes here, especially in this application, the point is not counting, right? The point is organizing everything. So all the adjacent terms are only different by one bit. So like I said, that's going to be useful um, when building up our k-maps. So I changed my mind. I'm going to go ahead and do a four-bit example uh, just because I think it'd be fun. Um, but obviously, um, you know, feel free to move on to the next video if you're not interested in that. So let's take a look at it. Um, Four bits has 16 terms, 
So we're going to count 0 to 15. So hopefully there are enough squares here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Look at that, just, just enough squares. Um, in binary, that would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, and finally 1, 1, 1, 1. All right, so now let's go ahead and convert that into gray code. These first bit are going to be kind of the same 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now we've got 0, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 0, 1, 0, then 0, 1, 1, 0. Um, 0, 1, 1, 1, um, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, there we go, so now the different stuff, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, um, 1, 1, 1, 1, there's our 15. Um, then we got 1, 1, 1, 0. Um, 1, 0, 1, 0. 1, 0, 1, 1. 1, 0, 0, 1. And then finally, one, zero, zero, zero. All right, let's go ahead and number those. So zero, one, three, two, six, seven, five, four. Uh, what is that? 12, 13, 15, 14, 10, 11, 9, and eight. I like how it always counts down there at the end. So there we go. There's an example of converting a four-bit um, binary sequence into its gray code. And again, like I said, the numbers here kind of look like soup, but don't worry about it. The important thing is that they're all organized so that all the adjacent terms are off by one bit and therefore can be combined during, using the uniting theorem. So there we go. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to build a two-variable k-map and how to use it using these two preliminary concepts. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.